Now to the lobbying row surrounding the former Prime Minister David Cameron and the finance company Greens Hill Capital. In a highly unusual move, the Chancellor, Rishi Sunak, has made public two text messages he sent to David Cameron last year. Mr Cameron had tried unsuccessfully to ask for help for the finance company where he was working as an advisor. Here's our Deputy Political Editor, Vicky Young. Former Prime Ministers don't have much trouble finding work after they leave number 10 and David Cameron is no exception. He served out the two-year required lobbying ban that ministers must stick to when they leave office, then ended up working for financial firm Greensill Capital as a paid employee. Goodbye, sir. This, like so many other lobbying controversies, is a story about who has access to power, how they use it and how the powerful respond. Mr Cameron's relationship with Lex Greensill goes back to 2012. According to this business card passed to the BBC, the Australian banker worked for him as a senior unpaid advisor in Downing Street. Twelve months ago, at the height of the Covid lockdown, Mr Cameron tried to persuade the Treasury to increase Greensill Capital's access to government-backed loans. Sources say he sent multiple text messages to the Chancellor Rishi Sunak's private phone. These haven't been released, but today, two replies have. On April the 3rd last year, Mr Sunak thanked Mr Cameron for his message, but said he's stuck back to back on calls and would try him later. The two did then speak on the phone. The reply on April the 23rd rejects Mr Cameron's proposal and goes on to say, I have pushed the team to explore an alternative with the bank that might work. No guarantees, but the bank are currently looking at it and Charles should be in touch. Best, Rishi. Charles Roxburgh was a senior official at the Treasury. David Cameron hasn't commented on any of this since questions were first raised in two newspapers several weeks ago but ministers reject suggestions of wrongdoing. The former Prime Minister uh, made contact with the Treasury. The Treasury throughout the pandemic have worked with a whole range of different businesses and stakeholders, but the correct processes were followed. And in the end, no money was provided to the company. It was turned down as a result of officials meeting them in the correct way. The Chancellor insists he acted with integrity and propriety. Labour disagrees. This is a complex story, but it's been made more straightforward this evening uh, with the publication of text messages. We need to see real answers from the Chancellor as to exactly what has gone on. We need full transparency. We're concerned that he may have breached the ministerial code and we need an investigation to get to the bottom of that. David Cameron once warned about the far too cosy relationship between politics and money. There are rules about lobbying, but critics say they're not tough enough. Now, tonight, Labour is piling the pressure on the Chancellor, saying that all of this raises questions about his integrity and his objectivity, and they're even suggesting that he might have broken the ministerial code. Now, Rishi Sunak suggests any idea that he's done anything wrong. He says it's absolutely right that he and the Treasury were listening to all sorts of ideas uh, about things that might help companies during the COVID pandemic. And, of course, in this case, what... David Cameron was suggesting was turned down. Now, of course, when it comes to lobbying, all sorts of people make their case to politicians and government departments all the time. And of course, not for the first time, many are now wondering whether all this is transparent enough. Vicky Young in Westminster, thank you.